Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you three lunch recipes that helped me lose 70 pounds. So these recipes are great if you have a job and you, especially if you don't have like a microwave or a way to reheat foods at work. When I was on my weight loss journey, I worked as like a sales rep. So I basically was outside of the office all day um, driving around, if you guys have been following me that long, you know I was always vlogging in my work van and yeah, I was basically just eating on the go all the time. So I ate a lot of like cold foods that were good cold. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be sharing with you today. They're just kind of different variations of those um, and foods that even if you do have a microwave at work, they're just good foods that you can meal prep that are low in calorie density, very high in volume, they'll keep you full, keep you satiated, and they're just easy to make a large amount of and then bring to work with you. These meals are also the types of meals that are in my meal plan membership, so I make the meal plans very simple so that like on the work weeks, um, during the week, on during the week when you're working the meals are really simple to prepare simple to bring to work with you they don't need a lot of reheating they're not like things that don't reheat well i've made it very you know intuitive in that way where it's like you basically have a simple breakfast and you have a simple pre-packed meal prepped lunch or something that's easy to prepare and bring to with for work um i cannot talk right now Bear with me. If you are interested in joining my meal plan membership, the monthly menu, you get a new 28 day meal plan every single month. You get access to a private support community. We have challenges in there. Um, there's lots of videos in there. There's a seven day guided meal plan where I go through everything with you, guide you through the whole first week, which will eventually be the whole first month. And yeah, it's just a great community. I love it over there. And one thing that I forgot to mention in my last video is where I was talking about it is that Derek and I have always given a 30 day money back guarantee on our products. We want you guys to love our products. We want you to be satisfied. So if you join and you don't like it, not a big deal, email us, we'll give you a refund. We don't care. Like we want people who purchase our products and our services and things to actually be happy with it. So if you're not, you know, the meal plan doesn't work for you, you don't like it, it's not your jam, you can just email us, we will give you your money back. With all that said, let's just jump into the recipes. I think you guys are gonna love these. We're gonna make a potato salad. These are just pre-steamed potatoes that I put in my Instant Pot, so I have seven yellow potatoes here. And I just put them in my Instant Pot with a little steamer tray and I cook them for five minutes and then just um, release it right away. I take them out and let them, put them in a bowl and then let them cool before I put them in the fridge. So I just cooked these last night. And I'm just gonna make this in my Instant Pot container because I have this nifty little lid. If you guys don't have these lids, they sell them on Amazon, I can link them below, but it basically just doubles as like a massive storage container. So I highly recommend because you can just mix up big recipes in these and then store them in your little Instant Pot container. So I'm first just gonna chop up these potatoes into just small cubes. And this is a cold potato salad, but you could eat it warm too if you wanted to. Also, when you cook and cool potatoes like this, you increase the amount of resistant starch in them, which is really good for your gut, but it's also really good for weight loss because um, resistant starch, well, it happens anytime that you cook or cool any type of starch. Um, even if you cook it, like even if you warm the potatoes up again, they will still have a lot of resistant starch. I'll link a short clip from a Joe Rogan podcast that Chris Kessler did talking about the, um, the potato hack. He uses with his clients. But basically, I talked about this in my foods that I ate to lose 70 pounds video. So basically resistant starch resists digestion. So it passes from your um, small intestine into your large intestine and repopulates the bacteria in there, which is good. Like it's really good for weight loss, but a lot of people will also say that they have like bloating and that they can't digest potatoes. But typically I think it's because they're eating potatoes that have been pre-steamed and cooled because I actually tried this out for two days, or was it three days? Yeah, so three days I only ate <laughs> potatoes that had been cooked and cooled, and I was so full 
and like bloated off these potatoes that I could like barely eat any of them. It was just so, it was insane because it's like, I'm not a new vegan. I've been eating high fiber. I've been eating lots of potatoes for a very long time, but I was eating like 30 grams of resistant starch every day instead of the normal maybe like 10 that I get. So it's one thing that changes as time goes on. If you have problems digesting beans or lentils, potatoes, it's just because of the resistant starch. So there's a good podcast that Ellen Fisher did with the Gut Health MD. I'll link that below as well, where he talks about having micro diversity within your diet and how that basically um, will benefit you so much more in the long run than cutting things out of your diet. Because if you cut things out, like for me, I haven't eaten meat, dairy, eggs, or anything like that in like almost eight years so i would not be able to digest meat or dairy at this point and if i ate it i would probably get really sick so if you're not used to eating a lot of broccoli or you're not used to eating a lot of beans or potatoes or anything like that your gut doesn't have the microbiome that it needs to digest those foods but as you keep eating them you kind of have to like power through it as you keep eating them, your gut microbiome will change to be able to digest those foods. So don't cut foods out just because you think that it's like healthy. It's definitely not unless you, you know, have some type of like actual disease, like celiac disease, but even gluten, like cutting out gluten for no reason or cutting out all fats or cutting out like certain foods, like obviously processed foods and things are different, like if you don't want to eat sugar or oil or flour, like I can understand that, but cutting out like avocados or beans or even gluten from your diet, if you're not celiac can cause you a lot of issues if you ever try to eat those foods again. So having a micro diverse gut is really, really good. And like you basically want to be able to eat all whole plant foods and digest them really well. So I would say at this point I can basically eat any combination of whole plant foods and I don't really get bloated unless I like overeat or like maybe if I eat a bunch of this potato salad and then I have like some oranges afterwards I might obviously not feel very good because of just the way that the food is combined but yeah I just wanted to throw that in there for anybody who's like struggling with bloating or anything like that check out those resources and make your diet as diverse as you can. All right, so I have my potatoes chopped up. I'm gonna use a quarter of a red onion and I'm just gonna dice this up really finely. So we're just gonna mince these up as well as we can. So we have like tiny little pieces of onion so you don't have like some massive chunk. I know my cutting skills don't look super great right now, but this cutting board is like really warped. <laughs> That's why it keeps moving around. All right, so I'll add this in here. I'm gonna use half of this English cucumber, which I thought that this was kind of a weird ingredient for a potato salad, but it actually tastes really, really nice and refreshing. And this is one of those recipes that you can prep on Sunday and have like all week for lunch because this makes so much food that you could probably at least get three or four lunches out of it. And these are like my favorite kinds of recipes, especially if you have a job where like you don't have access to a microwave or maybe like you're just gonna be running around all day that day and you want something cold that you don't need to reheat, this recipe is perfect. And then I'm gonna add in probably like 10, I'm just gonna actually take a big handful of these cherry tomatoes and I'll just chop these up as well. I'm gonna add some Kalamata olives. Another thing that you could put in here is um, capers, or I also like to put pepperoncini, chini, pepperoncini in potato salads like this. I'm just gonna use a couple because Derek's gonna eat some of this too and he hates olives. Maybe when it's all mixed up, he won't notice. <laughs> and then for the dressing, we're gonna use two tablespoons of this white wine vinegar about a tablespoon of mustard. It doesn't have to be like the brown mustard, it could be whatever kind. And then about half a tablespoon or so of maple syrup, and then some dill, so about a teaspoon of dill. So this is a really low fat recipe. 
I like to keep my lunches low fat because I feel like it gives me more energy throughout the day and have my fats at night. So if I have like tofu or avocado, I'll usually have it with dinner because it just, it keeps me from like wanting dessert. It just gives me that like little bit of satiation that I need. I mean, some nights I do eat dessert, but I like to have a little bit more of a robust dinner because it's usually like my biggest meal. But having a lighter lunch just helps me have more energy and stay more focused <laughs> during the day. So you can just pour that over. You could also add like other things into there if you wanted to add like garlic powder or turmeric. So you can just mix this up. I actually forgot salt. So you're gonna wanna add about half a teaspoon of salt as well. Just to taste, just add a little bit and then you can always add more. And I also like to add some red chili flakes because I like everything super hot. The other good thing that's nice about this Instant Pot lid, this isn't like sponsored or anything, <laughs> um, is that you can just put the lid on and just shake stuff up, which is usually what I do because I'm just lazy. So like I said, you can have a serving of this for lunch. It makes about three servings, I would say, at like 500 calories per serving, but you could stretch it to four if you had like a side of veggies with it or something else. You can also add like way more vegetables into here if you want, like you could add the whole cucumber, the whole pine and tomatoes and like more onion or any other veggies that you like. But this is just a really delicious, simple meal. It's really good for camping or like if you're going to the beach for the day, try it out. You guys will love it. gonna make some marinara pasta a lot of times I'll make this into a bolognese by adding some lentils all you do is just drain and rinse these and then you can add like half a cup into the sauce and it's a lot more filling because there's obviously some more protein or you could use a lentil pasta but this is my favorite kind of pasta that I use I'm not gluten-free or anything but I really really love this pasta brand usually I get it at natural grocers I think you can get it at Whole Foods as well but it's so good, like it actually has the texture of like wheat pasta, it is amazing. So I'm gonna use this today, it's actually all I have left, which is why I'm using it. So I'm gonna show you guys how much pasta you can make for 500 calories, so I'm just gonna measure this pasta out because I wanna make an accurate bowl here. So we're gonna do 400 calories worth of pasta, which is 110 grams. So we have 400 calories of pasta. Sorry if you can hear that like bubbling in the background. I'm gonna add two cups of mixed veggies and then I have two cups of spinach. So sometimes I'll add broccoli and cauliflower into this, but today I just have a lot of spinach left so that's what I'm using. I also like to add olives into my pasta to give it some more flavor. I always do nutritional yeast on top, which I'll show you guys. Um, but the pasta sauce that I use is this one, sometimes, I was buying the Lucini brand for a while, and I can't find, for the life of me, an oil-free pasta sauce anymore, so I just go with whatever is the lowest in fat. This one does have olive oil in it, but it's a gram of fat per half cup, so I don't really care. I don't care about that so much. I just care that, you know, it's natural ingredients. There's nothing, like, crazy in here, but there's another pasta sauce that my husband uses that, like, is twice as calorie dense, I wouldn't use it. It's the Rayo stuff, I'll show you really quick. So like the difference between these two is this one has 100 calories and seven grams of fat per 120 grams, and this one has 45 calories and one gram of fat. So I always just go with this because I feel like you can make your pasta so much more flavorful by a couple tips that I'll show you guys. So this is what we're gonna be adding into it and I'll show you all this over on the stovetop. So you're gonna wanna cook your pasta al dente. This is perfect. I just tasted it and it's done exactly how I want it. So I'm gonna take this out and drain it. Put this over medium high heat. I'm gonna add in my veggies and then my spinach as well. So you can turn this to low again. So we're just gonna let this saute for a minute till everything warms up and our spinach wilts. 
What I'm gonna do is I like to add some more flavors into the pasta sauce because I feel like it just makes it so much more flavorful. So I'm gonna add in some garlic salt, just like a little bit. And then I like to add in Italian herbs. If you have fresh herbs, it's so much better. Like in the summertime when I have basil and thyme and oregano, I put that in my pasta and it's amazing. And then I'm gonna add in a little bit of red chili flakes as well. And then we'll just let this cook for one or two minutes until all the frozen veggies are warmed up and the spinach is wilted. This is one of my favorite dinners because I always have pasta, pasta sauce, and frozen veggies on hand so I can whip this up in 10 minutes. It's also a really good travel food. Like whenever I go on a plane, I'll make a big bowl of pasta and I'll put it into like a container. I'll just eat it cold because I actually think cold pasta tastes better and I'll bring it with me and it holds up so well. I would recommend though, if you were traveling, use a wheat pasta because it will hold up better than the rice pastas. But if you like cold pasta, it's such a good travel meal to bring with you. Just a big bowl of pasta with marinara and veggies. Delicious. All right, so that's all cooked. I'm just gonna add in my noodles and let these soak up this sauce for about a minute or so. And putting your noodles in the pan like this, it really just helps it kind of like absorb all of the marinara and you just get a much better flavor than if you were to just pour the marinara over the veggies. You kind of want to have it on like a low sizzle and just continually stir it like this. All right, that's it. Let's go plate this up. Like this is a very filling meal for 500 calories. Like look how much pasta this is. So when you cook it with a bunch of veggies, I usually cook it with two to three cups of veggies and it just bulks it out so much. And then I just like to add a little bit of nutritional yeast on top. I always get this unfortified one. I feel like the ones that have B12 in them have just so much B12 and I just don't need that. So I'll add this on top for a little bit of a cheesy flavor. And then if I had any like fresh herbs like basil or oregano, I would put those on top as well. So one of my favorite lunches to have when I was losing weight was sushi. And I know I've made sushi like a billion times on this channel, but I'm gonna show you guys a new sushi recipe that I had at a restaurant and I had to recreate it. So we're gonna use these super greens. You can use like a mix of any greens. Sometimes I just use spinach if that's all I had, but this is just baby chard, organic spinach, and kale. And we're gonna make a little kind of miso sauce to saute this in and this is so good, just trust me on this one. It's also like a low fat meal, so we're gonna take about a teaspoon of miso, and this is just red miso, but you can use any kind of miso that you have. And then we're gonna take about a teaspoon of this chili paste. If you don't like it spicy, don't add the chili paste. And then I'm gonna add in like a half a teaspoon of maple syrup. You just want a tiny bit for like sweetness to just balance it out. And then like a quarter teaspoon or half a teaspoon of garlic powder, just depending on how garlicky, garlicky you like stuff. So we'll just add a little bit of water to this and get it into like a paste. And then all I'm gonna do is take a couple big handfuls of these greens and saute the greens for a couple minutes until they wilt in this paste. And it's, oh my gosh, I don't know what it is about this, but it's just so good. I love it so much. It's just like such a different kind of taste and it's salty on the inside, so you don't really have to like dip it in soy sauce or anything like that. So this is a good lunch like on the go if you just need something that you can kind of just grab and eat. It's really good for that. So I'm gonna put my pan over just medium heat. Like I said, add my miso paste into here and add in a bunch of these greens. And then I'm just gonna cover this until it heats up because we just want the greens to wilt. So I have this sauteing. I put a bunch of greens in here. I like to really fill it up with greens. Um, but yeah, this is basically done. And I'm just gonna take this out and put it into a little bowl because you just wanna let it cool for a little bit before you assemble the sushi roll so it doesn't break apart. 
All right, so I put these greens in my freezer for a little bit to just cool off. So I'm going to put my rice here. This rice, I have had cooling as well, which is the key to sushi. If you don't want your sushi to taste like fishy and break apart, you need to let it cool, like almost completely before you assemble it. So then I'm just gonna put my greens in the middle. We'll just wet the end of this over here to get it to stick together. Some water. Actually, I have this backwards. And then we're just gonna roll over the greens and roll this up. And then when you cut your nori, the best knife to use is a serrated knife. So you can just cut this into little pieces. And then, like I said, I don't even eat this with soy sauce because it's so flavorful from the greens, but I love this furikake stuff. I've been obsessed with this stuff. I bought like a six pack of this. I just love it so much. So I'm gonna put a bunch of this on here and that's it. I hope you guys try this because I don't know what it is about this sushi roll, but like, it's just so delicious. And like, if you have to go to work or something, you can make a couple of these, bring them with you, and you have a nice, cool sushi roll for lunch. I like to put these in the fridge and let them cool down. Or like, if you're on the go, like I said, this is great for hiking or camping or a beach day or anything like that. So let me know if you guys try this. Always tag me on Instagram if you guys recreate stuff. I love to see your food recreations. So that is it for the recipes for this video. All the recipes and everything will be down in the description box for you guys, as always. Um, I hope you try these, I hope you love them. The sushi is like, if you are, you know, a sushi lover like me and you're over the avocado cucumber, because I feel like there's just not a lot of options for vegans. And when I had this sushi roll, it was just so freaking good when I had it at this restaurant. I had to make it. You can also make it into onigiri. Did I say that right? Onigiri, onigiri, um, and make little cute balls and like wrap them up really nice as well. You could put the greens like that sauteed on a sushi bowl with like tofu. And if you're in my meal plan membership, you know the sushi bowl is like the number one recipe. Everybody raves about this thing, but that's a good thing to switch it up with. You could put like tofu and the, the sauteed greens, or you could do like um, um, sweet potato and the sauteed greens and some avocado. I'm actually gonna try that because I was gonna make a sushi bowl today. Mm. Anyways, <laughs> hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.